I'll be talking on malabsorption syndrome in India and overview. This condition is very common in our clinical practice. We need not present with, patient might not present with a frank malnutrition symptoms, but they have associated GI symptoms, which is very common in our GI practice, and we ignore. And in the, like, in the previous uh, talks, we said we usually treat them with PPIs and prokinetic agents. And earlier, in the last to two decades, before two decades, the infectious causes were very common for malabsorption syndrome, but due to improvement in uh, sanitation and standard of living, the infectious diseases are coming down, and the other causes like autoimmune conditions like celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease are increasing, which is responsible for malabsorption syndrome in India. So historical perspective, the ancient book Charaka Samhita which is a Sanskrit book on Ayurvedic medicine, also mentions about uh, malabsorption syndrome. And the term SPRU was first introduced by Manson in 1880s. These epidemics of malabsorption were also no noted in India during the times of World War II. And it was reported in South India from 1960s to early 1980s. The GI system is responsible for the motility, secretion, regulation, and digestion of nutrients consumed in the diet. The GI tract is involved in the absorption of fats, carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, minerals, and trace elements. So any disruption in the absorption of these nutrients will result in the GI symptoms, and con if continued for long, results in malabsorption. So for the normal nutrient absorption, requires three steps. First is luminal and breast water processing, where the digestive enzymes break down the complex molecules into the simple molecules for that to be absorbed. And then the absorption across the cells into intestinal mucosa and transport into the circulation and lymphatics. So what is malabsorption and maldigestion? Malabsorption is impaired absorption of nutrients caused by any disruption in the process of absorption of the normal absorption. Whereas impaired digestion of the nutrients within the intestinal lumen because of various deficiencies of enzymes or at the brush border membrane which interferes with the absorption of the nutrients is maldigestion. However, in the clinical practice, malabsorption refers to the deficiencies in the, both the process of digestion and absorption. Malabsorption and maldigestion might differ pathophysiologically, but these two processes are inter interdependent. So examples of malabsorption and maldigestion. Rather than, we can say conditions causing malabsorption and maldigestion. So malabsorption seen in Crohn's disease, celiac disease, lactose intolerance, small intestinal resection or bacterial overgrowth, Whipple's disease, radiation enteritis, and pernicious anemia. And maldigestion, as because of enzyme deficiencies resulting in malabsorption, these are pancreatic insufficiencies, particularly fat malabsorption, gastric resection, bile acid deficiencies may be secondary to hepatobiliary obstruction, and cirrhosis of liver. So malabsorption tell us when the components of the mucosa. So when the components of mucosa are, dist are disturbed or damaged by a variety of reasons like immunological causes or infections or toxic or chemical substances. Then malabsorption can uh, affect both macronutrient or micronutrient absorption or both, causing excessive fecal excretion, nutritional deficiencies, and GI symptoms. Malabsorption syndrome may be global, that is affecting the absorption of and all the uh, components of the diet or may be isolated to specific nutrients. Causes, again, infectious causes being more common in India, particularly tropical sprue, followed by autoimmune conditions like uh, gluten-sensitive enteropathy, commonly known as celiac disease, inherited or metabolic disorders, immune disorders, hypersensitivity, particularly eosinophilic astroenteritis, which the frequency is increasing, uh, neoplastic conditions, systemic diseases, and inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. The incidence of these two conditions is also increasing, maybe because of the change in our dietary pattern and lifestyle. So again, classification of malabsorption, Again, based on the, where the defect is, either due to the defective interluminal digestion, as seen in the enzyme deficiencies, 
malabsorption due to mucosal or mural abnormalities as seen in celiac disease and other diseases affecting the intestinal mucosa and due to infections. Mechanism of malabsorption in the luminal phase because of the enzyme deficiencies like enterokinesis, deconjugation of bile acids, then luminal bacterial overgrowth or luminal uh, dysmotility resulting in the mal digestion and ultimately malabsorption. In the mucosal phase, because of the dis, uh, disruption of the mucosal integrity or impaired hydrolysis activity at the mucosal brush border, resulting in the decreased absorption of the nutrients. In the transport phase, any obstruction to the lymphatics or circulation resulting in malabsorption. So mucosal pathology, this is a normal mucosa. We might see, uh, see increase in the intraepithelial lymphocytosis, but the most common finding is uh, mild to moderate villus blunting and crypt hyperplasia without any significant diagnostic findings. This flat mucosa is seen in advanced diseases or uh, con inflammatory conditions like Crohn's disease. So clinical features, they may present with diarrhea, uh, steatorrhea, malnutrition, weight loss, abdominal pain and anemia. Although all three major nutrients may be malabsorbed, but the clinical symptoms are majorly due to the malabsorption of fat and carbohydrates. So consequences, iron deficiency anemia due to, uh, may be there, macrocytic anemia because of B12 or folic acid deficiency, again bleeding, bruising and petechia because of vitamin K and C deficiencies, carpobidal spasm, calcium deficiencies, edema, protein and albumin deficiency, glycitis, B complex deficiency, night blindness, vitamin A malabsorption, pain in limbs, bones, pathological factors, again calcium deficiency, vitamin D and other electrolytes, Peripheral neuropathy, again B12, B1, and B6 deficiencies. So now malabsorption syndrome in India. In the developing countries, non-infective causes are the predominant cause of malabsorption, whereas tropical sprue and infective causes were common in developing countries like India. However, in the last two decades, India has seen the emergence of celiac disease and inflammatory bowel disease. This may be due to socioeconomic development and improvement in health and sanitation during this period, which has reduced the incidence of chronic infective diarrhea and tropical sprue and changed the spectrum of malabsorption. So chronic small bowel diarrhea with malabsorption poses a significant impairment of health-related queries, related quality of life in India. And India is apparently witnessing a paradigm shift from the infectious causes to non-infectious causes as a result, uh, maybe as the sanitation and hygienic conditions are improving. So there is evidence from large number of studies across India which have shown that the incidence of celiac disease is increasing, but still the prevalence of tropical sprue is high. So this is one of the studies uh, from South India, uh, from the Varangal, involving 200 patients. Uh, here you can see almost 41 patient, uh, the patients had a tropical sprue as a major cause of uh, malabsorption followed by celiac disease and then other infective causes. These are the various studies. You can see studies across North India from uh, which has shown celiac disease as a 65% which is very high followed by tropical sprue. Another study from South India CMC Vellore with 124 patients showing tropical sprue the most common cause followed by celiac disease and Crohn's disease. And again, from another study from Lucknow showing tropical sprue is a commonest etiology. And one study from Mumbai showing celiac disease again as a common cause. So these two are almost common causes. One study we can here can note that from the northern western population, uh, celiac disease is more when compared to southern population. This may be because the northern population, they consume more of wheat-based diet. And in South India, they consume more of rice-based diet. So coming to general evaluation for malabsorption syndromes, when the history and physical examinations are suspicion of malabsorption syndrome without any strong evidence supporting for diagnosis, then we can go for general evaluation to look for support the diagnosis, but not diagnostic test. This include metabolic panel like liver function test, uh, renal function test, electrolyte dis disturbances, hemogram to look for anemia, albumin levels, and uh, other ele elements like zinc, magnesium, vitamins, to look for the support, uh, for the look for supportive diagnosis for malabsorption. And fecal fat test, it is more sensitive for fat malabsorption syndromes. Fecal fat estimation from the single sample, but if you have a strong suspicion, 
then we can go for 72 hour feed cradle fat. It is a gold standard, but again, it is a cumbersome to perform. Other tests include Sudan free stain, acid steatocrit. Another test is near infrared reflectance analysis, almost comparable to 72 hour fecal fat estimation. But advantage is it is faster and also measure nitrogen and carbohydrates while measuring the fecal fat. Specific investigations, when history and physical examination are confirming the diagnosis of malabsorption, then we need not perform general tests directly, we don't go for specific tests. For example, history of recurrent acute pancreatitis or uh, alcohol use, we can directly go for imaging to look for pancreatitis as a cause. And patient presenting with abdominal discomfort, which is relieved on taking gluten-free diet, uh, we can confirm, see that suspect it is a celiac disease and go for specific tests like TTG antibodies or endomycel antibodies and duodenal biopsies. Bread test to confirm carbohydrate malabsorption syndrome or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. However, jejunal aspirate culture is a gold standard for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Other CT imaging, MRCP and ERCP to look for pancreatic uh, pathology and also for ductal abnormalities. MR elastography to look for liver stiffness as in uh, NASH and hepatic amyloidosis and other conditions causing liver abnormalities. Biops endoscopies and colonoscopy by with biopsy to visualize the mucosa and also to uh, take biopsy to confirm the diagnosis of diseases like uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, jejunalitis, and celiac disease. Acid fast staining, it is help it helps in differentiating uh, trophorema vipoli causing Whipple's disease versus mycobacterium avium because these two have almost similar features on biopsy. So this slide summarizes the evaluation of malabsorption, which we have discussed earlier. I'll just skip this slide. So treatment, treatment uh, like correcting the deficiencies, treating the underlying cause, and avoiding triggering factors, particularly by diet modification, and treating symptoms like diarrhea, pain, abdomen. Treatment is usually conservative with dietary changes, such as food avoidance or supplementation. However, invasive procedures, surgeries might be needed as in the Crohn's disease, uh, where the strictures are formed for like transections, resections, and transplants in cirrhosis of liver. Complications, again, if uh, untreated and prolonged, then uh, let's result in chronic complications like uh, present with chronic diarrhea, bloating, malnutrition, weight loss, vitamin deficiencies resulting in osteomalacia, rickets, uh, skin changes, hematological uh, conditions like anemia and coagulopathy, visual impairment, then dermatological manifestations, musculoskeletal dysfunctions, electrolyte disturbances, cardiovascular disease like cardiac arrhythmias, neurological dysfunction resulting in peripheral neuropathy, and endocrine dysfunction like parathyroid dysfunction and chronic fatigue. So as we have seen in the uh, sli earlier slides that chronic, uh, celiac disease and tropical flu are the most common causes of malabsorption in India, I'd like to discuss something about uh, diagnosis and management in brief. So celiac disease is a multi-system autoimmune condition, especially triggered by gluten ingestion in a genetically predisposed in individual. And consumption of a very high gluten diet, up to 20 gram grams per day, has led to an increased prevalence and incidence of celiac disease. So diagnosis, gold standard is duodenal biopsy, serological test, and intestinal biopsies. Serological test includes anti-TTG antibodies, anti-endomycin antibodies, deaminated gliadin peptides, and HLA DQ, DQ8 positivity. And the combination of anti-TTG, EMA, and HLA DQ, D, DQ8 positivity, that is a triple criteria, had a good accuracy across the range of pretest probabilities. And duodenal biopsy is a pillar for the diagnosis of the signal, uh, celiac disease. So management, again, gluten-free diet, other drugs, like larazotide, acetate, and gluten-specific proteases from the bacterial mix in, are in clinical trials and have shown efficacy in symptom control rather than restoring the intestinal barrier. Again, vaccines aimed at desensitizing patients with uh, celiac disease to gladin peptides are under clinical trials. Again, tropical spru, it is a diagnosis of exclusion when the symptoms of uh, malabsorption are present and we don't find any other cause Yes, we can make a diagnosis of uh, uh, malabsorption syndrome. Again, diagnostic criteria, three tests, tool fat estimation, absorption of D-xylose for looking for carbohydrate malabsorption, 
and absorption of vitamin B12 by measuring B12 levels. A need to abnormal test in the set cons consistent with a tropical sprue in the absence of other causes of malabsorption. Then biopsies from the jejunal mucosa or duodenal mucosa will help in confirming the diagnosis. So biopsy will show villus atrophy, then crypt elongation and crypt elongation and uh, cell infiltration of the lamina papilla. The villus to crypt ratio is reduced to 1.5 is to 1 from 4 is to 1, which is seen in normal mucosa. So management again includes symptomatic treatment, folate supplementation, and antibiotics like tetracycline 250 mg four times daily or doxycycline 100 mg once daily for three to six months therapy usually helps in symptom relief and improvement in the malabsorption symptoms. Restriction of long chain fatty acids in diet and substitution with medium chain triglycerides will help. So to summarize, malabsorption syndrome is a common condition in medical practice in topics including India. There is a constant change in the order of etiologies causing malabsorption syndromes in India. So India has seen the emergence of celiac disease and Crohn's disease as in the last two decades as a cause of malabsorption. The socioeconomic health development and improvement and sanitation might have reduced the chronic infective diarrhea incidence and tropical sprue and changed the malabsorption spectrum. Due to lack of awareness among physicians about celiac disease in tropical countries, it may remain undiagnosed for a long period and results in the complications. Thank you.